Like the dashboard in your car, the Application Overview Dashboard in New Relic APM shows you a set of key performance metrics that allow you to quickly determine the health of your application. The data also shows you where to drill down for more detail if you need to troubleshoot a performance problem. So in this video, we'll take a quick tour of New Relic APM's Application Overview Dashboard. Starting in the upper left corner, we have the Time Picker. The Time Picker allows you to select the time context that will be displayed on all of the charts on the dashboard. So I can say, show me the most recent, 30 minutes or 60 minutes or some length of time. Or as we've done here, I can come to the Custom Date tab and say, show me the 30 minutes ending at 11.02 a.m on a particular date, and you can see that's what we have here. So all of the charts on this dashboard are showing me the same period of time, which makes it very easy to correlate. Uh, for example, if I have high response time, is it due to an increase in throughput? Uh, are my errors occurring uh, at a particular time when my response time is high, etc. To the right of the time picker, we have this widget, indicating that I'm currently looking at aggregate data across all of the hosts on which my application is running. This app is running on four hosts, four servers, and as I mentioned, we're currently seeing an aggregation of the data from all four of those. But if I wanted to see the data for one particular host, I could select it from this list, and the data uh, changes to show me just the information for that one host. And we can see, oh, it looks like this one's having a response time spike over here on the right-hand side. Then I can go back to my aggregate data by selecting all JVMs. Now right below that, we have, uh, it's like the speedometer in our car, the big gauge that is what we think you probably care about the most, the web transaction response time chart. This is showing the average response time of all of my application's transactions over the time window that we've selected. And we've broken that response time down into, you could say, categories of the application. Light blue indicates the server-side code. This happens to be a Java app, so the legend says JVM. If it were a Ruby app, it would be that same color blue, but it would say Ruby in the label, or .NET, or Python. So light blue is your application code. What proportion of the total response time is spent uh, executing code? This particular application is making web service calls, HTTP requests to external services. So the green part of the chart shows what part of my total response time is spent calling those services and waiting for data to come back. If I switch to another application that has some database activity, we can see that database time appears on the chart in shades of yellow. This app is actually using two different data stores. It retrieves data from a MySQL database, shown in this light yellow color, and then it also gets data from a Redis cache, which takes much less time because it's in memory, so you almost can't even see it on the chart. If I wanted to see this dark yellow color on the chart, I can hide the other elements by clicking on them in the legend so that only the Redis data is available, and we can see why yeah, it's not easy to see because it's just taking fractions of a millisecond to retrieve that data from the cache. On the other hand, my MySQL calls are peaking at about 600 milliseconds per request uh, over here on the right-hand side. I'll switch back to my storefront. Continuing to the right, we have our AppDex chart. And we have a separate tutorial that discusses AppDex, uh, how it's calculated, what it means, and how you can configure it for your application. But the chart shows uh, how closely your application is meeting the performance thresholds that you've specified for your app. So the number between the square brackets is the goal. It's the threshold that you or the application owner has set. Here we've said we would like our server-side code to respond within 0.15 seconds. And we'd like our browser pages to load within about two and a half seconds. So the number in the square brackets is the threshold. The number to the left is the AppDex score over our time window. So for the 30 minutes that we're looking at, our application is doing pretty well. It's hitting our AppDex threshold about 99% of the time. Browser is not doing quite as well. It's hitting our page load time threshold about 83%. And then on the chart, we can look at individual data points and see how that 
score was calculated for that point in time. Below the AppDex chart, we have the throughput chart, which shows how many requests per minute our application is receiving. Looks like over this time window, we're averaging a little over 2,000 requests per minute. And as I mentioned uh, at the outset, this can be helpful if we have an application response time spike because the app is under heavy load. You might see the line on this chart peak because you're getting a lot of requests, and you could see a corresponding spike in response time showing that the app is slowing down because it's under heavy load. Scrolling down to the lower part of the dashboard, we have a list of our five slowest transactions by response time. So for this 30 minute period of time, my login transaction has an average response time of about 1200 milliseconds. Uh, and then you see these little numbers underneath. These are not averages. These are individual executions of the login transaction, the slowest response times during our time window. So there was one call to login that took 1.6 seconds, and I could click on this link to see the detail of that individual execution. I could also click on the bar of an individual transaction to jump over to the transactions page and drill down on just login, for example. And then this heading will just take me to the transactions dashboard where I can explore all of my transactions and decide what I want to, to look at. To the right of that, we have the error rate chart, which shows me as a percentage of the total number of transactions, how many of those returned an error. So less than a hundredth of a percent of my transactions during this time window had unhandled exceptions. But I can see I've got a couple of spikes during the time window when that error rate was higher. So I could click on the error rate heading to jump over to the error analytics dashboard and analyze those runtime errors. The application activity feed shows me a list of notable events on this application. And this one uh, doesn't have any, so I'm going to switch to another app. OK, this has no current alert conditions, but if I go to the event log, I can see a reverse chronological list of all of the events that have occurred on this application. I had a critical violation open and a warning violation open, and then the critical violation closed and the warning violation closed. So this is in reverse chronological order. If I want to see only a particular type of data in this feed, I can bring down a filter and say, show me only critical violation events or only warning violation events or only application deployments or settings changes or some subset of those. So the filter allows you to determine what types of events appear on this feed. At the very bottom of the dashboard, we have the list of hosts on which this application is running. So as we mentioned earlier, this app is running on four hosts. Uh, they happen to be Docker containers, as indicated by this little container icon. If I have infrastructure, New Relic infrastructure installed, I can click on a host name and jump over to infrastructure to analyze what's happening on the host at the operating system level, what changes have been made, who's been logging in, what processes are running, etc. But here we show you at a glance some key performance metrics like CPU usage, memory usage, average response time and throughput per host. So you can quickly see if one host is performing better or worse than the others. If you have a lot of hosts, it can be difficult to see in this view uh, if there's any that are having a problem. So I like this little widget here that says break out each metric by host. Instead of displaying a table of host names, this widget displays a table of metrics, response time, throughput, CPU usage, and memory. And in this view, it's very easy to see if a particular host has higher response time than the others or higher CPU usage than the others. The line for that host will jump out on the chart from the bundle of all the others. So this breakout metric by host is a nice way to quickly see if one of your hosts is having a performance issue relative to the others. So in this video, we've taken a quick tour of New Relic APM's application overview dashboard.